wondered how airplanes may look like for future missions on Mars. Now, I'm not really talking about ordinary aircrafts that we see in our daily lives. Neither I'm talking about airplanes that governments are trying to send to Mars for future exploration. I'm talking about something very basic. I'm talking about airplanes that can adapt changes, airplanes that can respond to changes, airplanes that can learn from the environment, airplanes that can sense the environment. So when you have this requirement, where do you find such inspiration from? I had this problem for a long while, and I tried to find an answer. And I searched millions of books. Uh, obviously by application. Uh, I've searched millions of books to find a pattern between these three words, adapt, respond, and stimuli. And this is what I've got. This is a graph of three words, how oftentimes they were used in the history of all the English books that were published in the, throughout the world. And it tells very interesting stuff. You see that in 1800s and 1900s, there has been something going on which just boosted up the curve. It's an exponential progress. What is it? Well, I tried to find, and surprisingly, what the answer was that Charles Darwin published his theory of evolution. So evolution had to do something with adapt, respond, and stimuli. And I still didn't know what. So I still, and I ran that whole process again, and this is a new graph I get with evolution, uh, with adapt, respond, and uh, stimuli. And you see, the behavior of all these four curves is pretty much the same. It's an exponential curve. It, it all starts from the same point between 1800s and 1900s. So there must be the answer of my problem must be evolution. The answer of my problem must lie inside the natural evolution. So Charles Darwin said that evolution is a response to stimuli. Now, these species will not win, the, will not win against the race of time uh, who are more uh, strong or who are more intelligent. Only species that can respond quickly to the changes will win and, and, and sustain till the end. So the inspiration has to be natural. Inspiration has to be with birds. Now, birds take millions of years to evolve of what they are right now. We see seagulls, we see swift birds, but they, had, they took millions of years to evolve. And it all started back in those million years. I want, to I want to design an aircraft. Should I wait for one million years to see my, how my aircraft would look like with most optimized design? No, I couldn't wait for a million years. So I tried to simulate an artificial evolution in my computer. And that was my project for, uh, for my summer project, to find an answer if I can simulate uh, natural evolution in a computer. So to design an aircraft inspired from nature, I have to treat an aircraft as a part of nature. And this is the, uh, the first ever run simulation of an artificial evolution using genetic algorithms uh, with the help of Dr. Barrett. And uh, here, here's the video. You see. The, this is most random start, and ultimately the goal was to reach an highest lift-to-drag ratio, which means very optimum design for an aircraft platform. And over, uh, over almost 50,000 iterations, we get an answer, something like that. And this took eight hours only. Now, this is one of the other results I got. This is crazy. This is a crazy design. No airplane ever had this kind of a wing platform. So what does it mean? Does it really make sense? Well, I researched more, and uh, now it made sense to me. I successfully ran an artificial evolution wing, and it actually was very similar to Peregrine Falcon. And the Pelican Falcons are one of the most efficient flyers uh, at high altitude with very high efficiency, aerodynamic efficiency. Now, this is only a half of a problem. Well, let me give you one more result. Uh, this is one of the craziest uh, results I've got with my simulation. Um, this is uh, when you run a simulation, um, you start with a basic population of, of aircraft design that just are randomized. So this was the result when I ran for 50 generations or 60 generations. And I tried to look. It has, it has no sense at all. And I tried to find in the history of bird evolution, is there something close to this design? And there, are, there was. 
pterosaurs have been a million years before existing, uh, lived in, on the Earth, and they look very similar to my design. And this kind of crazy results make my day. It's, uh, it's fun. So this is actually only half of a problem. We can optimize wing designs based, uh, inspired from nature, and we can f and fly it and fly the aircrafts. Now, the problem is the optimization is only for a particular environment. I want aircrafts to be efficient in every possible condition, in every condition. So if you're trying to send an aircraft to Mars, we don't know how Mars environment is and how unpredictable can it be. I want a machine, and I want, I, want have, I want to have an airplane that goes there and dynamically adopts the shape, which is the best shape to fly at the most efficient, efficient um, with most efficiency. So over the summer, again, I uh, started this project, and uh, the part two of my speech is about giving life to aircraft, making aircrafts evolve, and making aircrafts morph dynamically. And this is a project, FlexFoil, and we started, me and uh, Brian Rieger, he's in the audience, and we started with this crazy design, uh, of uh, a crazy idea of let's try to morph a wing. Let's see what it takes to morph a wing. And, and usually, to uh, ordinary, we have to create more lift. We try to uh, increase the angle of attack, and this is very traditional. It's, 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 it's proof, and uh, it's existing everywhere. So we increase angle of attack to reach certain high lift uh, CL. And our idea is actually n not just to increase angle of attack, but change the shape of the airfoil while airborne. And this is, uh, this is what our idea is to morph the wing. And the results are even more fascinating. The results say the ordinary aircraft actually have loss, loses its energy in turbulence. You see those red, uh, red areas in the figure is actually loss of energy. With our wing, there is no loss of energy, at least it, with, that of, um, uh, with that multitude of uh, loss. We found out we can actually achieve almost 10% more aerodynamic efficiency with the, given, with the same requirements, with the same conditions between two different designs and different concepts of morphing wing. Now, how do we, how do we change? How do we find what's the best uh, shape to design, what's the best shape to fly at? We created artificial brain. And the way it works, it's, it's a neural network. It's, a, it's a, almost a, 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 a novice try to simulate an artificial brain. We create a lot of analysis. We run thousands of iterations to find if there is any pattern. And this actually, these graphs are one of our brain, one of our brain child of our, uh, of our prog program. And each surface is work as an artificial neuron. So the way it works is you have a stimuli and you have a response. So in our case, we have flight requirements, and then the code uh, processes the information, and it gives you the best shape to morph to attain maximum efficiency. And this is one of the artist renditions of how our, wing, uh, how our concept can be implemented. You see these are microactuators in the, in the wing, and they respond to changes, and they can morph the wing when it's required. And with our technology, we can achieve or we can, we can morph into any airfoil that is existing in the database. And so it brings me to a question. Again, what will airplanes look like for future mar missions to mar Mars? Well, it doesn't really matter. Our technology can da adapt any, any environment, and it can morph and, into, and form any shape that is required to fly with the most efficient design. So it doesn't really matter as long as we design the, aircraft, design the wing platform uh, with an efficient base, inspired from birds, we can use the technology to adapt its, its body, its shape in the real time. What are the implementation of this technology outside the aerospace? So let's look at. A lot of people started working on this uh, concept of morphing wings around the world. That's a BMW Gina concept car. It's already it's actually existing in in, uh, in Germany actually, and uh, they morph the wing. They morph their body completely. And things. on the right side, you see adaptive walls. These walls respond to proximity of human beings. It so you can see the structures being morphed in future. One of the other things I find the implementation of the technology, which I actually have used, is um, in clean energy. 
in, in January, I started a company, Nuovo Wind, uh, to produce ultra, to make ultra low cost wind turbines, which are accessible to everyone in, throughout the world, which could possibly solve the energy problem that we have, at least uh, to a certain extent. And you see right here is a, wind, a model that we had, uh, we made 3D printed. And this is genetically optimized designs that we are working on. So this is for more efficient design and low cost. And you, as you can see, the possibilities, possibilities are endless. Thank you.